Welcome back, everybody, to Rob's Metalworks. We are here in the home studio as we end out the month of April. Yet, once again, to bring you the best in Texas metal. And it brings me great pleasure to welcome a band that I have been working with for so many years, and yet they are one of our best. It brings me great pleasure to bring back the premier dark symphonic metal band from out of the Austin area, the band called Vesperian Sorrow. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hey! <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. What, what a great pleasure to have you guys here. And uh, so many uh, things happening with the band. Of course, you know, we have the, the vets. And of course, we have uh, the new era. So... You know, I'm not, I'm not, I, when I was thinking about, when I was contemplating putting this interview together, I was like, you know, I don't need to go back into the beginnings because true metal historian and fans know about Vesperian Sorrow. So what I want to do is kind of just kind of start a little bit uh, talking about some of the transitions that have happened and, and kind of what really made Vesperian Sorrow this this really kind of popular kind of cult band that has a strong following all over the world, really. Um, so to rehash for those people, uh, you started in 1994, and as I mentioned downstairs, under the name Unholy Descent. Uh, in 1999, changed your name to Vesperian Sorrow uh, because the record label wanted to. Wanted you to, and I did not know that well, so thanks for sharing that with me. You know, I, I, you know, I always tell bands, too, like, names are so fucking important. They are important. Uh, but l l my first question is, as we begin, uh, and I said cult following because you guys have thousands of people who follow Vesperian Sorrow despite the fact that uh, you haven't released a record in a long, long time, and we'll get into that later, but... What, what do you attribute the fact that you guys have such a strong following to? What is it about this band that, that has uh, you know, amassed the following that you have? What do you think it is? I didn't think we had a strong following. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, we've just, I think, longevity more than anything. Sure. You know, just being around and sticking it out together and keep playing and keep writing stuff. And really, that's, that's the only thing that i can think of you know so you know when i when i was doing my research for this record and, and the band one of the things that i kept hearing again and again was that and i said this in my intro is that you were guys were like one of the premier bands to do this genre of metal back you know in the mid 90s this symphonic dark metal you know um and I think that had a big part of it. Definitely. It was me and this guy like, yeah, yeah. with yeah. the symphonic stuff. Like in the mid 90s, when me and him met, we were, that's what we kind of bonded over was a band called Arcturus. I think yeah, it was, Arcturus. he was <laughs> like, yeah, we, we started like when I first met him, it was like Arcturus and then Cradle and stuff like that. And that's kind of like how, but I think before we even really introduced keyboards for the most part, it was more melodic death metal. But you know still death metal wasn't really blackened at the time that was kind of a an evolution a little bit over a few years but uh yeah yeah that's i mean that's that's what it was I mean, and then it kind of evolved into the symphonic thing when i when i hear the word symphonic i think like keys right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah right chris yep yeah you want to add anything to that he's the key yeah well so yeah I'm, I'm the key guy so early on uh back when we were on holy we didn't have many keys you know and it was kind of more it was still melodic it was kind of we were still in the you know edge of sanity kind of music kind of stuff like that and then later on when we did change our name into Vesperian Star we started adding more keys getting the more in symphonic realm uh I was a really bad keyboard player back then <laughs> but but so so, know, <laughs> so Chris you really play the keys 
I do. I do. I do. Wow, I play okay, the keys. Cool. Uh, he writes I write the music. Yeah. I write majority of the music. Do you write it on keys? Or? No, I write it on guitar, oh, bass, okay, yeah, keyboards, wow. and drums. Wow. You see, that's, that's kind of like always blows my mind because, you know, sometimes when I think, oh, this guy's a drummer, you know, he's the drummer. <laughs> and then I don't really think about the drummer like that on the back end, he's writing riffs. Well, that's why these guys get it. They're, they kind of get after me because it's like, man, it's a drummer writing a guitar riff. And it, like, how do you, it's kind of awkward for him sometimes. Cause I feel yeah, yeah. I've got more of a rhythmic style of writing. Plus I'm not that good of a guitar player. So that's why he could. <laughs> yeah. And you know what though, man, you know, one, one of the things I've come to learn in working with musicians for decades is that you don't really have to be a guitar master to be able oh, to no. write a good song. Oh no. I can lay down a good song. You can lay down a good song, good sloppy song. And then let the good guitar players <laughs> fucking, Work it out and, exactly. and bring it to life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you were the guy who, like, said, "This is the foundation of the of the song." That's essentially it. I write the foundation, then I give them the song. They come in, they add their parts, they add their their flair, their right, their specialty to it, and then pizzazz. then we get pizzazz, <laughs> and then right. we get we get into the studio, and then you know we start recording, and I, I mix, master, and produce. I produce them and. Do all that stuff. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. He's a horrible guitar player. Oh, yeah. Let me just I, say I, that. I, but I admit it. however, master musician. You know what I mean? Like he'll kind of show me like what he's going after, and then I, you know, let me clean it up. You know, exactly. and then we'll clean it up, and then there exactly there it appears. You know, so. yeah, that's what I was talking about. I say that Chris is kind of like our Phil Collins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good analogy, Logan. Good analogy. Uh, I, I when I introduced the band, I said tonight, symphonic dark metal, and I hate you know I hate to use uh, those kind of labels sometimes when I introduce a band because you know for so many listeners out there around the world, um, you could say oh they're majestic dark metal or they're progressive metal or you know. So I hate, I really hate to use those uh, descriptive terms, but yet, you know, it is true that Vesperian Sorrow does kind of display this huge sonic landscape, uh, complex music, uh, lots of keys, blast beats. You guys do so many things. And, you know, tonight, you know, as I was talking with Logan, I was like, man, is that you doing all those different vocal styles? So you guys are so diverse in what you're delivering. Uh, so for all the young people out there, there's people all around the world who watch our show. What do you say? What do you like to say to people that Vesperian Sorrow is delivering? What do you say? What would you like to say? Really, it's, there's no label to what we we write. I mean, we had a hard time in the early time in the early days, coming up with a description of what we were doing because it was really a mismatch of of a lot of different styles and and stuff that we and it really was just what what inspires us. What what was what were we getting off on at the time, you know? And uh, and then it would just come out. And then you know, we always wanted though in the in the early days clean vocals. So if you listen to the mm. early records. You hear female vocals or an attempt at clean vocals, you know, that was something that that we wanted to bring to the fold, but was never really able to. We, we On Stormwinds, we had Jason McMaster do a couple of guest spots, and Erica Tandy did a couple of guest spots, and... Uh, but I mean, it was just little little parts. But we, me and him were thinking, well, we, oh, yeah. we got We want to take this mm -hmm. to the next level, you know, and... This dude right here is the only guy that was able to. There's, Pull it there's off. nobody else that can do it yeah, like this guy. We're gonna get there. But as far as like, you know, what what to tell people? I mean, it's it's really. I mean, I I think I coined the 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 phrase to describe us dark metal back in the '90s because if you were considered black metal, you had to be satanic, and we were right. we were never satanic. We were nerd metal. You know, we. Mm -hmm like sci-fi and fantasy stuff yeah and yeah like, so we're not black metal you know because we're not even you yeah. know none of that stuff is about that so there was a band from finland that was calling describing themselves as dark metal back then and i was like that's a great description I yeah, think, yeah you know what i mean so <laughs> we're not black but it is darker right you know, stupid descriptions you know what i mean we're we're a little bit of everything now black metal we're death metal everything. power metal <laughs> just all of it mixed together you know so 
Eclectic metal. Eclectic, no. yes. Eclectic. <laughs> well, I think... I think We're Vesperians. Oh, that's I what do, we are. I do <laughs> believe that in order to really connect with Vesperian Sorrow, that you do, as a fan, have to have a certain level of kind of sophistication. You know, you have to know metal music in order to connect with Vesperian Sorrow. It's so an acquired That's taste, why I use the sure. word complex. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, like, the simple metalhead, it's going to go way over them. Oh, yeah. It's going to be beyond them. But if you understand metal... And and you know what's what's going on in the music and with all the sonic landscape, you fucking get it, and that's why I love your new record. Oh man, and that's why I've loved all your records. Thank you. You Thank know you. since back in the day, guys, and and uh, I mentioned on my Facebook, uh, we've been working with Vesper and Sorrow since 2006, mm -hmm. 18 years ago. Well, can you believe that? No, <laughs> it seems like yesterday. I remember that show like yesterday. So. Remember that show? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. The White Rabbit. Yes. Uh, crazy, crazy. Um, I talked about the fact that you guys do have a cult following. Um, you guys have thousands of followers on Facebook. I think like 30 plus thousand people follow you on Facebook. And that's pretty significant. Uh, and I'm, I feel pretty secure in saying that kind of like the initial releases of Vesperia and Sorrow kind of help build that foundation. So like beyond the Krusty Clips, your first record, and Psychotic Sculpture, your second record, were pretty fucking well-received records uh, at that time. Now we're talking like, you know, many years ago. But still, those are records that kind of, I think, help build the foundation for the following that Vesperian Sorrow has. Do you, how do you guys, would you guys agree with that? Or Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the Displeased Records, who we signed with in the early days, did a really good job of promoting us. They put us on the back, you know, they had advertisements on the back of a lot of the the big magazines at the time. And there was a, a, a journalist uh, back in the day called, uh, his name was Adrian Bromley. And he worked for Metal Maniacs, and he worked for uh, 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 Brave Words, Bloody Knuckles, I think, and un or Unrestrained. It was Unrestrained. He was like a fan. He was a hu yeah, he, he, huge he, fan. He was a huge fan, and he he he's you know, like any press that we were getting back then. It was from Adrian. He he passed away a few years after that, but oh. but uh, he was a big journalist, you know. And uh, that was our big break was having him as a yeah. kind of a you know a fan pushing us out and there, where, so. where was was he from europe he was from uh if i'm not mistaken i think he was from canada ah, but yeah yeah because he he worked at i think it was unrestrained i think he might have had something to do with brave words bloody i'm not sure yeah but yeah he was a fan and uh he gave us our first write-up and stuff the main, like. anomaly, the main anomaly was we were a bunch of texas boys doing yeah, european metal yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> which it wasn't really really yeah. in the scene back then right like, Right, and that's that, that. I think that's a great point. Yeah. If you guys are even, you know, even though you know you guys didn't, you know, begin the genre, but yet you're doing the genre. The first ones to do the genre in Texas metal, I think, um, is a big is a big thing, an important thing, uh, because you know what? <laughs> not a lot of musicians can pull that shit off, bro. Not, not, not like you guys pull it off. You guys can pull it off. We took a lot of shit for it in the early days. We took a lot of shit, actually. Like why? Like, like uh, uh, man, you know, Texas, <laughs> like what he says, Texas guys playing symphonic, yeah, yeah, yeah. melodic black metal. Yeah. Only the Scandinavians were supposed to be doing right. that. We played a festival in Germany in 2000, and I remember, like, people talking shit from the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, bunch of fucking cowboys, you know, get up back on your horse and all this shit. I just you should have said, yeah, motherfucker, uh, I got a gun. I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I, like, I just remember it. But I was like, man, we'll just keep going. We'll keep doing what we're doing. We <laughs> shit. were well received at that. Yeah. At that show, that yeah. That you know, um, I think, too, that's what's made Vesperia and Sorrow so kind of legendary is because you know, uh, despite in the fact of the hiatus, and we'll talk about that in a bit, that you guys have kind of always, always maintained, you know, loyalty to your genre. You haven't faded or you haven't changed. You're like, this is what we do. This is what we're known for. We have great records under our belt. Uh, aside from the two that I mentioned, you know, Stormwinds and, and then Regenesis Creation. I mean, these are great records, bro. 
And I always tell bands, too, I'm like, man, you know, your recorded legacy is your fucking legacy, bro. Because your recorded legacy will live forever. It will live forever in the annals of Texas metal. Forever. So uh, I think you guys, at this point, have established that foundation solidly. It's not going anywhere. And, you know, Vesperian Sorrow is a band that, you know, you respect. You respect, man. And continue to fucking build that legacy. And we're going to get into Awake of the Great Light. I can't wait. We're not there yet. So uh, I have to talk about what I just mentioned, the, the hiatus. Okay, so there was a 12-year recording hiatus. That doesn't mean that the band was inactive for those 12 years, right? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so no. talk about that. That's a loaded question, yeah. you know. I mean, I got a little bit of I got a little bit because I got a little bit of that downstairs because you guys said, yeah, we played some shows. But, you know, I didn't I didn't know if you guys had broken up or if you're just like, hey, we're on a hiatus or we're just going to do shows now. We're not going to record anymore. What what was the the premise uh, 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 that happened in 2012 and beyond? The gist of it members 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 okay so we were trying to acquire new members after you know we had a couple of the guys end up uh departing the band and it's it's just it's very hard finding somebody that knows this type of music can do this type of music and pull it off and pull it off yep on top of that we were in the middle of writing we've been in the middle of writing i mean dealing with new members having to show new members parts and then was Not that Storm out. Winds of Ages record? That was uh, Storm Winds of Ages records, yes. Yep. So, and the members issue continued after the Storm Winds of <laughs> Ages record. So it's it's that was a lot of the issues that we had. It's final situation. Yeah, we still we were still together. We were still tugging along, but we were we tend to like to take our time in writing <laughs> versus just kind of pushing stuff out. <laughs> I, I I would agree with that with that fucking. Uh, you know, pathway, you know. Oh, yeah. Again, like I said, you know, winter you, don't, sun syndrome. you don't want to put shit out. No, no, it's not winter sun syndrome at all. I think what he's, I'll expand on what he said a little bit. Me and, if me and this dude were just like, let's just write records and put them out. We could put them out way quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, it would, it would go a lot smoother. But we always want to be a live band. Like, even if sure. it's just local shows. Sure. Whatever. We, and so we would struggle trying to keep people in just to keep that momentum going as far as like hey at any at any moment we can go and play a show i mean because uh our old guitar player who's actually going to be joining us again used to say it all the time he he used to say you know being in a band and uh uh never playing shows it's like football practice you, you practice yeah, all yeah, the yeah. time but yeah, you yeah. never play a game you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. we were stuck in the cycle of, of people coming in and coming out and we had some, you know, member drama here and there. So there was never no hiatus. No. It was just kind of trying to overcome the member, the membership, the member kind of like shifts. Uh, and we, okay, we, okay, we, okay. We, I didn't know that. Th- there's more to it, but it, it all depends on if you wanted to. Well, I can, I could also illuminate uh, some things about 10 years ago when you guys had called me in and we we're working on a separate project. Okay, hold on, hold on, Logan. So... Ten years ago, so the the hiat- uh, the the lack of recording has been twelve years. Yeah. So, you've been with the band for no. the majority of those twelve years. No, no. Here's the thing: we were doing. And I've known these guys for a very long time. Yeah. I was like twenty some years. So they called me in on on some projects, some new material they're working on, and uh, we were working on it for a, a few months and. Um, they had decided, well, so, well, why don't we just use this and turn this into Vesperian? Because it was going to be a whole new thing. And at that time, I really just couldn't make the commitment and say, like, oh, um, yeah, let me, I'm all in. I had other things going on. So I was like, mm, you know, call me later on. Let's see what's going on, what happens. And uh, after about 10 years, they called me back. And they're like, we're already getting this thing going. Would you like to do it? Yeah, you know, yeah. so, but yeah, it, they were constructing this whole album and the ideas that formulated it. Ten years ago, yeah, yeah. and it evolved, 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 and it got refined. 
Um, but yes, it was the member situation, and um, maybe I'm partially to blame for that. Had I, I stuck around, were you at that familiar time. with Vesperian? How familiar were you with Vesperian and what Ooh, they had done? Uh, we're talking about late 90s. So at the time, I was living in Laredo, Texas. So when Vesperian would go and do shows over there, um, it was an event, like it was massive, yeah, yeah. and uh, even and Laredo, it was, and Laredo, Holy even if shit. It, it, no, it, didn't, it didn't matter what little shithole that. Any band was playing. My when, girlfriend loves Laredo. Well, Laredo, <laughs> Laredo Pride, <laughs> and Vesperian would like. It was amazing to go see. They were treated like, like, like as if they were Demon Burger or Cradle. You know, yeah. Tons of people would show up. They'd play Laredo, Nuevo Laredo, and uh, that's how I kind of semi got introduced to the band. When I moved over here uh, in 2001 to this area, yeah, uh, I started performing with other bands i was in a band called vows and ashes and uh another band called vex and i started booking shows and doing stuff with uh vesperian and uh i had with vows i had done a few shows with uh vesperian and bat castle and that was fun and it was at the back room yeah so i've known these guys that's why i really started getting uh, acquainted with uh both chris and will and uh i think maybe we had traded a few band members too you know we're poaching each other's <laughs> band members, band mates. But uh, yeah, I, I'd known these guys for quite a while. We were always friendly. And uh, of course, um, communicating, seeing each other at other shows. So um, yeah. Yeah, also to expand a little bit on that, because the label like to put it in the presser that there's a 12 year hiatus that we keep having to answer for in every one of our interviews. Well, the recording we hiatus. Yeah, that yeah. The band was inactive. Yeah, yeah. A lot of it, right? too. And that's, that's something that I've come to know now. Yeah. Because yeah. initially when I, you know, I thought that the band was just like on a hiatus for 12 years. Um, it was just a recording hiatus. Yeah. Be, yeah. <laughs> Back in the, what, 2006, 2007, something like that, we started a recording studio uh, at the band co-op. And this guy here... I don't know. He recorded probably a 200 bands there. Wow. And it was a lot of bands. Yeah. And uh, then between Stormwinds and the new one, we had built three different studios. Wow. In the Austin area. I mean, like from the ground up because mm. they, we, the, the market was taking off. So everywhere we went, the prices kept going up. The sure. Prices, sure. So we would like just leave, build a new recording studio. I mean, like walls, sheetrock, you name it. Wow. So three different studios in that time period as well. That, that was a time drainer for us. So, Wow. Wow. It, you know, I think it's so cool you know, how, how you guys work so hard to keep this band alive and, and keep it progressing, you know, despite, you know, member changes and, and, and then finding the right guy. I think you found the right guy with Logan, though, man. Logan sounds great on this fucking record. Sounds great on this <laughs> record. And, you know. Uh, I'll share later on with the people, but you know, Logan's from all over and all parts of unknown. unknown. And he knows his toys and I love that about him. <laughs> and he brought me some toys today. No. Look at these people. Oh my God. Look at this. Biblical angel, the seven eyed guy. Oh my God. Julie's going to make, Julie's, Julie's going to make me put this in a drawer somewhere. So he's not out. Take him out every now and then. Give him some air. Like, like, she gets scared of shit. These people, yeah. This is the the zombie. Uh, the zombie. Uh, 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 that's Nick. Uh, uh, right, right, the right. zombie. Um, uh, Nicholas Cage. That's right. Undead zombie celebs. Nicholas Cage. He has one shoe. But these are so you need. cool, bro. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much. Oh for yeah, it man. To I know you like toys. I know you like. I like you have toys. A, a nice, extensive collection. Yeah. And like, you know what? Rob might appreciate some of my. Oh God. Some of my handiwork. It would have been a sin if, if you didn't bring these over, yeah, doing what you do. And then we got uh, Gabe here. Yeah, that's a. Uh, hey, that's uh, we brought him over to hang out. This is uh, our bassist, Diamond Gabe. He wasn't uh, able to be here in person, but his embodiment is here. His manifestation. His is manifestations here. here. So, and he's probably saying, "Hey, man, what what's going on?" And 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 uh, I uh, I like playing bass for uh, Vesperian Sorrow. Yeah, yeah. What are you guys doing? We love Gabe. Gabe, I'm sorry you're not here tonight. Uh, I keep hearing about what a what an uh, extravagant character you are, and maybe on the next go around you can you can make. Oh, it. What, what, what do you mean by extravagant? <laughs> now, uh, Will, I asked you about this uh, earlier, and regenerous 
Re- Re- Genesis Creation was the third record. Um, and it was was it re-released that record? All right. So tell me a little bit about the re-release of that record and why it was re-released. I don't know if you got okay because I want to know like was that something that the label did or or was that something that you kind of initiated? But uh, there was a re-release of Regenesis Creation, your third record. We uh, dropped the bag back in like 03, 04 with our record label. I dropped the ball, I mean. And uh, we were left without a label by the time we released Regenesis in 06. So 06, we self-released. And uh, the, the record never really got a proper release at all. Like, nobody can find it, whatever. So whenever we hooked up with Black Lion in 2019. Was that when you first started with Black Lion? Yeah, 2019. I told, we, we still had that rec. We, had, uh, we were remixing it or something like that. And me and this guy decided, yeah, we were like, let's just re-record it and yeah. release it through Black Lion. Mm-hmm. It never got a proper release. So let's do it through them. And, and Oliver was like, was willing to do it. And so we just wanted to see some, it out. We thought it was a good right, record, right, right. and it never got released. But did you do anything to the recordings? Were they remastered? We or? re-recorded the whole thing. Oh, I went yeah. oh, really? So there's two. There's two versions. I went in. We oh, did the drums, see, the I didn't keyboards, know that. I didn't know that. The guitars. That's pretty significant. Yeah. The vocals, the bass, everything. <laughs> it's, it's, wow. It's pretty similar. Are they the different members on the second recording? No. Nope. nope. Well, all the well, same. Minus guitar player, the Which recording you like better? I know you're gonna say that you have to say the second, but is the second recording sound better? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. better. It sounds better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Honestly, yeah. I don't know if I, we should have done it. Is the CD we that got, you brought me the second? That's the second version. All right, okay, good. I don't okay. Think we have any original press oh wow, yeah, those are kind of collectibles. Like a thousand of them, I think. So the oh ori- wow, those are those are kind of collectibles. Dogs, yeah. The original Regenesis was a lot more experimental in the recording aspect of it because yeah, yeah. we were just kind of newer to recording so wow later one's a lot better <laughs> okay uh and and uh i want to make sure that everybody um kind of gets an update on the band so uh will and chris you guys are kind of the foundation of uh, Vesperian Sorrow, and we've known that for many, many years. So ta- let's just kind of take a quick moment to introduce, like, who are the current members uh, in the band. And let's start with, with uh, Logan here. So Logan, uh, quickly yes. share, you know, we know you're the vocalist, and my God, you, you, you're doing a magnificent job uh, on this record. Uh, talk just quickly, since you're the only new member here, and we're missing Gabe. Gabe will <laughs> be here later. Well, we'll make a solo uh, one. For share him. a little bit about uh, your history in, in uh, Texas metal quickly wow. and how you got acclimated into Vesperian Sorrow. Yeah, well, as I, as I mentioned uh, previously, I had uh, actually seen them uh, a number of times. Uh, at that, uh, in the early days, I was playing in a few bands in Laredo, moved over to this area, played. Um, with uh both vows and ashes and vex and i joined a band at um that was out of chicago um so i'd fly there i kind of took a break from the texas scene and and was playing with a band called against the plagues um which had members of forest of impaled and uh uh, lost horizon and luciferion and later on uh marco martel from uh, malevolent creation and he did a tour with vader as well and uh, I did an album with them and an EP, and I'm still in touch with them, you know. And uh, after that, when I came back, I started kind of doing my own little projects here and there. Uh, one was a spaghetti western doom metal band called uh, The Hangman's Curse. Uh, and, uh, you know, working, I worked with this one band called, um, I was a huge fan of. Uh, they were known to be the worst band in the world called Complete. <laughs> and uh, they were. They were known as one of the worst. I was a huge fan and um, started doing uh, a, kind of managing them since 2008 around there. Uh-huh. And um, which is oddly enough, uh, Gore is a huge fan of, of Complete. Wow. Yeah. So um, and I'd been doing other side projects since uh, just whatever, you know, if someone said, hey, could you come in and do some vocals or um, uh, do some uh, lyric writing or whatever? 
Um, I also worked with Robert Williams with um, from Igniter. Uh, me and Jason McMaster did a song uh, for a, a project called Texas Metal Outlaws. Yep, I know those guys. I and know uh, Robert... Uh, Robert Williams. Robert Williams. Hey, dude. Yeah. That Robert yes. and also Bat, loves Bat it. Angel. Well, me, Robert, and Jason did a cover of That's What Friends Are For. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's And I did a Selena cover, too, on yeah. that, too. Yes. <laughs> was that you singing I was me, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. I love so that So there song. you go. I'm always kind of hidden in there somewhere. Nice, um, nice. My name will pop up every now and then, so... Uh, Logan Oliviari, right? Uh, Orlando Logan Olivero. There you go. Orlando you go. Logan Olivero. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There, all my friends call me Logan, so, you know, it's easier that way. Um, and uh, so having known the boys for quite a number of years. Oh, I also played with a band called Horror Babylon, too. So I ah. kind of, I, with uh, Craig Leach and Brian Cameron, and Chris recorded me. And I think that's that's kind of where you first kind of heard me. You're like, yeah, you, you, didn't, you didn't hear my shit, so... Uh, it goes like, yeah, oh, you could sing. I'm like, yeah, I could sing. Uh, I guess maybe. Yeah. And so that's when we first started really saying, you know, toying with the idea of me working with, uh, with VS. Nice. And that one was also like, probably about 12 years ago. So, uh, and I've yet to put out that album, which I need to do eventually. Um, but, um, yeah, so just so many unfinished works and projects, but I'm glad I uh, actually got something done with these guys. So. Um, as, uh, you know, yeah, as are you. So, but yeah, that's in, in a nutshell, that's kind of what I've been doing, uh, over the years. It's a beautiful thing. How kind of things come together eventually, right? And right. you meet people and, and you never know what's going to happen. And then it just all comes together. Really? Okay. And then really, this is all we have in Gabe. And then our old guitar player, Jerry, that's been in and out of the band for since we started is coming back so yeah. he's been already back a little yeah. bit so. yeah all right now let's talk about what we're really here to talk about and that is the band's new record for all you people out there go ahead and take a good look at it this is the braid the latest from vesperian sorrow cult awaken the gray light look at the cover work be sure to look for it at all your music media outlets once we're done tonight and download it and jam it just like I do. Jesus, guys. You know, when I got this record from your publicist, I was like, oh, man, who cares about the 12 years? These guys haven't missed a fucking step. A very vibrant record along the same genre that you've always been loyal to and one of the things that i that quickly kind of i thought about you know specifically thinking about what's happened in the scene and in the music industry from now till 12 years behind is that you guys decided to release a full-length record why why you know and, and most bands now are kind of you know releasing singles or three or four song eps and stuff like that to kind of keep their name out in the market why did you guys decide to say hey we're gonna come back after being absent for 12 years of recording and release a full-length record we were working on the record the whole time all you know some of those riffs too were were older than our previous records mm. so like we had just had a lot of material we wanted to put out mm. and i don't think doing a single or anything like that would have would have done anything it wouldn't move the needle at all for us you know so we wanted to put it out it was a, a concept record too so uh, it, it needed to be released in full length for sure you want to expand on it yeah it's, it's just moving forward we are going to start doing singles and EPs, but we had so much material. We had, we well, after have, 12 years, yeah. Yeah, 40 or 50. You better have songs some, a lot of music. material. So we, yeah. uh, I think, too, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, music fans who may not, you know, know the band or be from our area, uh, sometimes bands change. You know, they change their style. They, they implement new things into their music. Uh, how important was it for you to maintain the band's sound? Especially, like I, as I mentioned, uh, 
based upon the success initially that you had gotten from Beyond and Psychotic to kind of maintain the band sound? How important was that for you? Was that something that you said, we got to be loyal to that? No, I just wanna, so no, no, no. We the the thing about the VS sound is we don't think about the VS sound. We just we just write whatever comes out comes out. The staying loyal to the style is just, I guess it's just it's natural. Not, it's just natural. It's so, natural. Yeah. It's natural. So that's you got more. Than that? Not really. I mean, <laughs> first couple of records, a lot of people writing, you know, throwing ideas in. Uh, but, I mean, we know where we were headed. We know what we wanted, you know. We were a lot more inexperienced in those first records, too, like, you know, musician-wise. And, and this guy just, we used to constantly badger each other and belittle each other, tell, tell <laughs> you suck, you know, you got to get better. You, this guy especially, he's, he's, hor he's horrible at that. But I would tell him, too, you know. But, but just kept, kept pushing, kept pushing, and, like, we knew what we wanted to sound like. But sometimes it was whether we had the ability to do it or not. And uh, so we just kept practicing, kept practicing. And made ourselves have the ability. Made to ourselves. And, like, honestly, the, 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 the most current record, and this might sound really cliche, but, like, because every band, you know, oh, this is the best thing we've ever done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that same shit. But I really think this is, like, kind of, we're finally getting to where we wanted to be 20-something years ago. Yeah. We had no ability to do it back then. Right, right. You know, because also, too, like, you know, um, production in texas back in the 90s like nobody recorded metal we went with a country guy i think the first guy and spent eight thousand dollars for nothing oh, man. yeah and uh so like we were it was an uphill battle there was no producers in texas doing metal back then that i knew of anyway so it was a constant uphill battle and so it took us 24 27 years whatever it is to get to where we're at now even though you know like i said I think we're at where we wanted to be back then. Now, I can so, empathize, my friend. Yeah, you know, longevity, longevity in our art uh, pays off. Yeah, you yeah. find yourself, and then you, you just become so good at what you want and what you do, and uh, I think it's a beautiful thing to get to that point, and it takes time to get to that point. I think a lot of bands to split up really soon. Mm -hmm because of personalities and stuff like that. Me and this guy have been friends since we were 18. Wow. And, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs you go through. Sure. It's, you know, in our old singer, oh, yeah, in our old singer too, you go through every process of life, you know, you know, losing family members, you know, arguing, shit like that. But if you have kind of a common goal you know you're going towards, then, you know, you can kind of push through and... We did, and here we are. Yeah, I mean, and I, I think that I, I think uh, Chris said it, right? I mean, when, when you when your family, it's like, you know, you're gonna fucking fight and oh, yeah. fucking you know be at ends about certain stupid little things, but at the end, you always come together. That's right. For the greater good. That's right. For the greater good. Yeah. And uh, you know what's important, and you know you you got to put your pride aside, and uh, you know put your fucking little, you know angers aside and just say hey you know okay i'm sorry yeah let's move on oh, definitely let's move on and let's move on and we've been through it all and you've been through it all i mean how can you not have a fucking what 30 year career almost <laughs> him not me but <laughs> 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 come on well you look good for an old man oh thank you sir thank you uh I have to let's talk about lyrics because Lyrics is so important. Uh, I know this record is a conceptual record, so talk a little bit about the concept of Awaken the Grey Light. Whoa, that, Awaken the Grey Light. That's, that's going to be a whole other interview there, but I can oh, try to... Give me the synopsis, that's, that's, my that's, friend. Um, it's um, when I first approached these guys about what they wanted the music to be about. Uh, uh, they're saying, First well, of all, let me say this. With their history, yeah. For them to throw all of that on your lap, that's a big fucking yep. chunk of fucking responsibility there. Well, and you know what? You fucking pulled it off, bro. You well, pulled it, it took off. years. <laughs> it, but it, the the fact that you said 
earlier in this interview, like Rob, I knew Vesperia and Sara. I was a fan of Vesperia and Sara. So you knew already where their their cloth came from. Yeah. So, so you knew where to go. Yeah. I. I. Well, I didn't. I, I did, and I didn't. Um, I want. I know. I asked him. I said, "What? What do you? What are we writing about here? You know? And what do you all want?" I was like, "Well, it's sci-fi." I'm like, well, "What kind of sci-fi?" And my ancient aliens, bro. Well, <laughs> well, we're talking about like something that's um, the Anunnaki. Be like this. This is kind of like if you know, going back to very old school, uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs. You know, a lot of the old classic. You know, John Carter of Mars sort of ideas. You know, and I was like, I want to get the essence, the 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 very raw, uh, uh, quintessential science fiction elements and combine that with a dark gothic kind of um, uh, contemporary uh, feel. So um, I ended up just kind of getting involved with this whole uh, concept and storyline that takes place on a whole other universe, whole other planet, different kinds of beings. Um, and But then I started going in and just kind of second guessing myself and asking a bunch of questions. I'm like, well, how do I start this off? How, what's the song order going to be? How is this going to work? So I really had to like make charts and maps and diagrams. Oh and, 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 and that took a course of, of two or three years for me to actually develop this. Um, this is like a, this is like the first part of a three part thing. I hope we get there guys, but really uh, gray lights. The first part. Yeah. yeah. We're getting there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, yeah. Okay. Um, there we go. I didn't but, know that. but here's the other thing that I did. Everything that you've heard before in Vesperian, uh, as far as lyrics go, I've kind of taken elements of that and created kind of a cohesive lore to tie in previous songs. I Genesis heard about Creation, that. Storm Winds of Ages, uh, all of those kind of tie into the events that, that preceded the uh, events of this actual storyline. Um, so, and I got deeply, actually, uh, originally, some of the ideas I was actually uh, pitching to a, a comic book company. I'm a huge Transformer fan. So uh, I knew some people that were working with, with uh, comics. And I said, you know, rather than just finishing this, let me kind of utilize it for my own story. And so there's a lot of different elements of the, of the nerdy things that I enjoy yeah. um, that are all present in the story. So mm. it's, um, it's not totally um, allegorical to what to anything that's going on in today's event. So mm. uh, before people try to go and try to read be between the lines and all that, some of it's very simple. And I wanted to create a, a simple foundation for a very complex storyline. So this is this is just like the beginning. This is like the tipping, like the tip of, not the tip of the ice. This is not the tip of the iceberg. This is just the, uh, is that what they say? Is that the idiom? Yeah. Yeah, I, guess it's, I guess a good way to say it, maybe. Um, this sets up the framework for what's to come. Um, and uh, w within each of the songs, there are codes. There are um, different uh, references and things that will be revealed in the future mm. or people will try, may try to connect. Mm. Um, they can always hit me up and I'll tell them if they're right or wrong. Um, mm. But I also take a I, fucking hit of acid and listen. Well, again. yeah, exactly. And I, I, I'd like <laughs> I, I like to leave things to the imagination. It's a very uh, 16th century point of view. But uh, you may want to like it's it's the interpretation of the listener uh, is is open in certain songs. But at the same time, the the meaning is right there, oh. you know, and I can go step by step. And there's someone who reviewed uh, some of it recently, didn't even mention anything about the lyrics. Uh, but as far as what. What I was really dead set on doing also is, is getting all the songs that we're working on and creating the, uh, the order of the album. Because mm. that's also important mm. to the narrative of, of the entirety of the piece. So sure. it's, it's going to so have... So listening to the yeah. record in its entirety is important. It is. But okay. there's several ways you can do this. And I have, I have listened to this record in its entirety many times. And, you know... Well, I'll say it like this, and just, just so I can clear it for some listeners. The third song begins the story. The first two songs are preludes and give you histories. There you go. They're history, little history lessons. There um, you go. Now, 
if you want to pick out two or three songs that you like from the album, go right ahead and do that. Pick out the the ones that you like the most. All right. But that is the order from track three onto the very last track. Yeah. You know, ten. Um, but um, yeah, there are different ways that you can go back. Now, some some people can go and listen to one like track five and say, oh wait, does this is this something that has to do with track two, chapter two? So there's a lot of different things that I hid in there. Uh, I mean, I had plenty of time to do it. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was going to be either this or a book. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you for sharing all that yeah. because I, I think it's important because I think as listeners, you know, sometimes we don't get all the intricacies of it and the methodology of it, but it's so beautiful to kind of really kind of get like our, our little cheat sheet in, in, uh, to the record. That's like I, as I, as I for aforementioned, a complex record. I think that was a great yep. description. And all the maps and stuff that he was talking about are going to be in the record. So, yeah. yeah so. Wow. Yeah. Not all <laughs> That's of them. Crazy. There's more. Like, That's we're, crazy. There's, I mean, I'm, I'm, work, I'm considering making uh, small novella chapters that would be recorded, the dialogue, to fit in between the songs. Oh, my God. So oh it's and I have like half of that written already. So it's just a matter of me going in there and recording them with Chris with some synths or. Yeah, it's, the, it's a huge concept. The science kind of fiction motif, you know, when I kind of looked at the artwork, too, I was like, oh, man, that looks like a Stargate. Is that a Stargate? <laughs> Regenesis it is. Or, Regenesis. Yeah, yeah, that's Regenesis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Regenesis is definitely a Stargate. Regenesis is a Stargate. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing I'll say, like about Donnie, our our original founding member and vocalist. Donnie, Donnie, yes, wherever yeah. you are, sir. If you're watching this interview, we talked about you tonight. We gave you much much respect and love, and uh, you you are definitely part of uh, the Vesperian Sorrow history. Definitely, and, and yeah, definitely. definitely. That's our brother. And uh, but one thing he said back in the early days, it, it, ne- it always stuck with me for whatever reason. He was like, man, I don't want to I don't want to sing about anything that's going on in this world. I want to make my own world. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what he did. You know, so and he he expanded on it as you as you nice. explained. So nice. Uh, Chris uh, mentioned this earlier, but uh, this record sounds great on my computer and my stereo so talk a little bit about the recording and the producing of this record sounds good man that's awesome that sounds good (laughs) i'm I'm always experimenting and kind of you have your own studio chris or what i we i so okay we used to have our own studio so like he mentioned we we built three over the years Mm -hmm. now where did you record this record at at my house and uh his uh rehearsal sound tank tank. (laughs) Well, we, uh, we did what's the, the tank? What's the sound tank? Oh, okay. Uh, so the sound tank is, is my uh, rehearsal facility that I've been running for oh. over 10 years. Um, and uh, a lot of bands, we have 11 bands, uh, you know, it's at full capacity. But that's, you know, we're bands like Flesh Hoarder, uh, the Beaumonts, uh, you know, Mike Ariano, Mike Fury in Disgust, M.O.D., a lot of bands have, have, uh, have been there, have played there, have spent a lot of time there. Um, so, yeah, it, it's that's where now Vesperian's there. Been there for mm-hmm. a few years now, and that's where we recorded the vocals. Yeah, we did everything else. Uh, Amplitude Studios. Amplitude Studios, Amplitude basically. Studios. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, it sounds great, my friend. It sounds great. Good job uh, on recording. Now, uh, how did you guys get the deal with Black Lion mm-hmm. Records? I mean... I think I heard you m- uh, mention earlier that you guys had already been with them on the previous release, no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. how we did that relationship... Okay, so how, uh, how did that relationship continue 12 years later? I, I don't know. I don't remember how no, we got was, in contact with them. So we I think were, it was... We were signed with another label. Black Lion came in on... His so we were signed with another label. If I'm, if, remind me if I'm correct on this. Black Lion came in and said, hey... We'll buy out your contract from that label. Really? Was it? Was it? Wasn't that one? 
Who was it? It was. I think it was one of our previous members that got us in contact. I think it might have been John Katz, if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> who got us in. But I might be wrong about and that. And they're from Europe, right? Sweden, yeah. Yeah, Sweden, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I don't know who made the introduction, but they, they were interested in, in releasing our stuff. and, and uh, He's been building that label for a while now, and they've made a lot of good connections. So yeah, they're, they're doing well. Yeah, yeah. We were on a label before then, right before then. And we had to sign a... No, I think you're thinking of something yeah, years ago. Of something years ago. But it, we were, it did happen. Something like that did happen. Anyway, Black Lion is cool. So I don't remember how we got And Black concert. Lion is where fans can find Awaken the Great Light. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for all you people out there who want to uh, get hard copies, some of you old schoolers like me who want a hard copy CD or want a kick-ass fucking killer shirt, go to blacklionsrecords.com. And order your stuff there. You can get it tonight. Go order it, please. Uh, it's Same. it's killer stuff. We got licensed. I got. I, uh, well, no, 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 you want to? No, 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 no. Okay. No, I, come I, on. I, I can't say that. <laughs> um, that's great. One of the things too, uh, the record's been out, uh, for uh, a little bit, uh, and it is already getting great reviews. And reception from the worldwide metal community. Uh, how does that feel after all these years that you have not released a, a recorded effort and to come out 12 years later with a recorded effort and it getting fucking, you know, nine out of ten, four and a half out of five fucking reviews? It's getting great reviews. We were skeptical. <laughs> we, so the direction we took, especially with the vocals, the new vocalist. We were we were wondering about this. We it was always like in a, like well, how's this going to be perceived in the yeah, world? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. so we're just we're just glad. You were you sir, I mean you guys felt kind of uncertain. When, oh man! When the recording was done, you're like we don't know what uh, if this is there was what many, did you done? like we don't know if this is up to par or what? No no, no no nothing like that. It's just the style the style the, I mean, we we st we're still true to our style but yeah the different vocalist was you know always there in the back of our mind because you know. Donnie had been with us for every, every yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and then it was just adding more of the, of the dynamics to the vocals. Um, we were just unsure. We just, I mean, sure. we, but, but, but we were just like, whatever happens, happens. We're good. Sure, sure. Yeah, we uh, there were a couple times where we were like, fuck them. Like, let's do what we want to let's what yeah. let's do what we want to do. Like, I mean, it, we were having a great time recording vocals, especially when we uh, but there are many, many times that we were like, this is this is going to tank hard for sure. Like uh, people are going to hate it. Our old fans are going to hate it. But we're like, hey, we don't make money doing this. Let's just uh, do it. You know. Let's just be happy doing what we do. But yeah, exactly. Since the first album, we've always done what we wanted to do. Not sure. <laughs> so. Sure. Uh, you know. And as an artist, I think all artists do that. They roll the dice yeah. and they put themselves out there, you know. And, you know, I remember back in the day, I used to go out to clubs and, and people would come up to me and like, Rob, why are you putting, why are you interviewing these poser bands? <laughs> like bands that weren't like super heavy. And I'm like, dude, I, I like that band. And like, dude, they're not heavy, you know. You need to interview heavy bands. So, you know, you can't you can't please everybody. You'll never be able to please everybody. Especially around here. And yeah. And you gotta just be true to yourself, man. Yeah. At this point, right, right. Well, at this point in life, now I don't even want to say in our careers, in life, you just gotta be true to yourself and just That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's what we have been. Uh, we got a lot of shit early on too for being melodic. Yeah, you know there are a lot of bands locally, you yeah, know, all around Texas. All the fucking were, purists, right? They're, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, trying, yeah, they're, they're the they were the posers. I <laughs> to be honest, they're straight. They're posers. the fucking. Those are the guys who fucking live like this. Yeah, you know, and that's why I'm always taking great pride at like Rob's. You know, you're gonna be on Rob's if I fucking love your shit. I don't care if you're death metal, black metal, thrash, progressive, power. Or fucking just melodic metal. If I like it and I jam it, you're going to be on Rob's. Oh, yeah. And you can be in any one of those genres. Right. And if I, don't like your, if I don't like what you're doing, then you're not going to be on Rob's. It's that simple. You know? Fuck them, right? One thing I can promise you is we've never taken ourselves seriously at all. I mean, like, 
even through recording most of this they're recording vocals we'll be l- cutting up laughing like doing stuff to spite oh and, man uh, <laughs> so. i'd be all over logan's ass do it again motherfucker <laughs> uh, yeah they did oh, well, <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> they weren't recording <laughs> Okay. So to all you who don't uh, like the new direction, we apologize that we don't sound exactly like the band that you want us to sound like. <laughs> Let's talk about the record is out. It came out yesterday. Wow. And then you guys are on Rob's the very next day. That thing, I thought that was super fucking cool. You're welcome. <laughs> that was super <laughs> fucking cool. You're here the day after your record drops. And trust me, guys, uh, I take that with great respect. I mean, that's like, that's great respect. Uh, so now the record's out. What does the rest of 2024 hold for the band? What do you want to do for the rest of this year? Now that the record's out. Huh? Well, first of all, yeah. What would no, you no. like to do? Not, it doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean yeah. what do you have confirmed. Just like, what would you like no, to no, do? No, no, no. Well, first of all, thanks. I mean, we, we, like, I mean, there's no other place that we'd rather be than here right now the day after. I mean, you're keeping it real. You've been doing it for so many years. And uh, we really do appreciate you having us on the day after the release, you know, and um, it, it, it just goes to show that that uh, you have been representing the scene for many years and supporting bands like us. Um, as far as what we think that what we want to do this year, I'd be ideally it'd yeah. be nice to put out some sort of release show um, yeah. uh, once we get the physical product in it more than likely will be in Austin. Um, and uh, see what we can do, you know. And then after that, we're, uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know how Will feels, but me and Chris really want to get back to work on some more material. But festivals is a big deal, too. Uh, if we can get something like Hell's Heroes next year or, or, or something, if someone wants to shoot out some suggestions, we'd love to go and see what uh, opportunities are available to do, to, to play to a, a mass group of people. It's easier that way, too. Not only for the band, but for people that are definitely going to go see a good chunk of, of, of metal that they like. Yeah. And uh, they have an opportunity to see, oh, this old school band's going to be there. I'm a fan of theirs or I, I'm familiar with them. Why not go and spend the amount of money that I'm dead set on spending and uh, see all these bands for one good weekend? So yeah. that's the advantage. And I think that's the direction that a lot of underground metal has taken over the years is just doing these festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we definitely would like to be part of that. Playing shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that include, uh, how important is it for you to say, we also want to go across the pond into other parts of the world? How yeah. important is that? I, I mean, yeah, I think South that's, America, yeah. Europe. I mean, well, those are the people that no, want to hear I, us. I mean, I kind of <laughs> feel like this genre is more, more attractive to those markets. Yeah, I mean, I think that's definitely one of those things. I mean, the guys have done it before. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, but I've played Mexico with uh, previous bands, but uh, it's we notice that there's a different kind of appreciation that people have in, in in South America and in places in Europe and places in Asia. Different kinds of fans that show a different kind of appreciation um, in different ways, mm. and uh, it's definitely if we have fans that want to see us, and there's enough of us, and we can. Uh, managed to do it, um, you know, absolutely. Yeah, that's something Probably that we definitely... Be more selective about yeah. the shows that we take. You know, uh, that's a private conversation <laughs> that I would love to have with the band. But, you know, because I'm a marketing master, and I'm not afraid to say that because it's true. <laughs> but a band of your stature and longevity needs to position itself in the right way. So yeah, well, when you say like, we want to do stuff, but we're not going to be fucking opening a fucking five band show. No, we don't do that. I don't think like touring is going to be in our future, to be honest with you. I think maybe selective. Selective shows. Things, selective shows. And then if we can get to doing festivals, that would would be ideal for us where we are in life. Like, yeah, we don't, you know, we don't want, yeah. we can't make a living off of it. Right, to be right. honest, to be, all, real, to be real, to be real. Of course, we all yeah. have our, our grind, right? We all have yeah. our daily grinds that we that we need to do to live. And uh, if we're gonna do something too, I mean, just the fact that you guys have been around for so long, it's like and, and delivered not and not only just been around for so long, but delivered quality music and records. It's like you know, 
if you're gonna come, if you're a promoter, and you're gonna come at us, then come at us with something fucking good, you know, because we're adding to your show, right? We're 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 legit, yeah. And position yourselves like that, bro. Uh, I seen all the videos for the singles of the record, you know, like these, you know, just uh, so that fans can hear the record. When will there be a real video? It's in the works. All right. It's all right. That's what I wanted to hear. It's been in the works. All we're right. Gonna, is it going to be like a performance thingy or? There's going to be a few. We want to Or is it like... going to be Logan in his fucking little Here we go. Here we go. Look, I'm, I've been I've been trying I'm trying to fit these guys in 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 leotards and we just yeah. haven't gotten the right size for that. And uh, Gabe, we're working on, on getting some dreadlock extensions for yeah, him. Yeah, come it's on, Gabe. Okay. <laughs> hey, it's something that we're, we're working on. It's just one of those, it's a timing thing. We, our main uh, prerogative was to put this album out yeah, and yeah. have it released. Yeah. Now we're going to have the next few years to work on these projects, um, lyric videos, music videos, whatever the case may be, yeah. uh, supplementary material, art books, all that stuff. We have plenty of time for that, and because we want to be promoting this for the next few years, uh, you yeah. know, while and, uh, working on other things. As you should. Uh, I was gonna say this earlier. I think, <laughs> I think Will was already talking about like next steps, and I'm like, dude, it's very important. It's very important. You know, I know you guys have been sitting on Awake in the Great Life for many years, and you guys might be sick of it, but it's new to the fans, so it's very important that you don't cannibalize yourself. Okay. Even though you guys might want to move on to new music and do new things, don't cannibalize what you're doing out in the market because Awaken the Great Light's still new to a lot of people out there. So, uh, you know, uh, doesn't mean you have, don't have to work on it. Just don't let the people know. We, we were supposed to have done some uh, official videos before the release. Ah. It just didn't work out. Yeah. So now we do have plans to do a few more official yeah, yeah. videos. We want to do one. It's going to be, there's going to be some playthrough videos. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever, live action, whatever they're called. And then we do want to do a VFX video, even though a lot of people are like, oh, those are cheesy. What's but that? Just, you know, the, the uh, what is it? Computer. Like, uh, you know, okay. the, yeah, the yeah, virtual yeah, effects yeah, yeah. world, green screen type stuff, you know. I want to see a performance video. Yeah. I want to see a performance video. <laughs> I want to see Logan throw down. Uh, yeah, I want to see Logan throw down uh, with the cape and everything. There's a lot of spinning going on, a lot of moves, you know. I like to just get up and, uh, you know, get split, do the splits in the air, one leg up, you know, and ride a giant inflatable penis on the stage, you know, and Gabe comes over and kisses me. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Gentlemen, as we near the end of this interview, and it's been, it's been a wonderful chat, uh, uh, just a couple of other things. Uh, I want to, and we, we talk, we kind of, I think we skimmed the surface of this downstairs, but uh, what's happening uh, in the Austin area metal scene as you see it now? We kind of saw like the demise of the, what was that club called on 6th Street? The, where all the metal shows would happen. Oh, are you talking about uh, emos? No, on the Sixth Street. Dirty, dirty dogs. dogs. Dirty you dogs. You saw the kind of the wow. demise of Dirty Dogs and the arise of Come and Take It, and it kind of seems to me, you know, I'm not from Austin. I'm from here in San Antonio, but it kind of seems to me that Come and Take It has kind of monopolized the whole metal scene in San Antonio, in Austin, should I say, and. Uh, if I was a band in Austin, I might feel a little kind of constrained about that. I mean, I know there's like other little small clubs. Like, isn't there like uh, yeah, Lost Well, Red? Okay, well, okay. So, so uh, my question is, what's happening in the Austin metal scene from your point of view? So, um, based on my observations and and having been part of it, um, there's a lot of people that will. Um, there's a lot of untruths and there's a lot of uh, misinformation and um, there's a lot of exaggeration. So um, there, um, I haven't seen a lot of monopolization. Um, what I have seen, um, and this is around the time when people started calling Austin the live music capital uh, of Texas or the world. They said, the live music capital of the world, Austin. And uh, the other thing that they started saying was that, uh, you know, oh, keep Austin weird. 
Well, once that started happening, Austin stopped being the live music capital, and they stopped being weird once those slogans came out. Um, so naturally, this created uh, a, a reaction, uh, an effect uh, within the you know the music community, whether it was underground rap, metal, um, you know whatever punk. It, everyone got affected because people started buying up these venues. Uh, all the places that we used to be able to play at got bought out by some, you know, um, condo. by some condo, right, by right, some, right, 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 and right. and so we couldn't, you know, it was hard for us to go and do that. Um, South by Southwest became a place where, you know, local Texas bands were no longer welcomed. So um, it became. Yeah, so uh, it's Austin still has its spots. You just got to go and find them now. The scene really isn't. Um, it's it's not. It's it's pretty. I don't know. I, I guess it's it's pretty sparse right now. And uh, whereas back in the day, as you well know, places like Backroom, we were talking about like the Backroom Headhunters. I always tell people, yeah, back, Headhunters. Back, back in the day, you, you're starting a new band. And even if you've been in bands for a while, you're always going to start off at Hunt Hunters. That's kind of where you go and start your, you know, I got a new bet, new project. Start off at Hunters, Head Hunters. Where we're going to go next? Let's go to Room Seven Ten. After that, uh, let's go to um, uh, Beerland. You know, and so and sadly, a lot of those places are closed uh, now. Seven Ten is kind of going now under uh, was it Valhalla? So there's some good things that are coming out. You just kind of really got to go out and seek them and find them. Uh, and every now and then I, I hear about a good show happening at Come and Take It or at Lost Well. Mm -hmm. So, But it's not as strong as it used to be. Uh, everything's just kind of a little separated now. Um, and there's no cohesiveness to the overall like support, uh, yeah, which yeah. is fine because, you know, Austin is no longer Austin anymore. The people that you knew that live there are not there anymore. Austin's, yeah, yeah. Austin's like just a franchise city. It's it's another uh, it's a byproduct of 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 celebrities moving into it, and it's no longer has his identity. I say we go and find some other city to invade, <laughs> like Bernie, <laughs> and turn that into what Austin used to be. You know, some you know I think San Antonio still is there. I think San Marcos could be that. Hey. Well, San Marcos could really very think much. San Marcos could become that. It's right in the middle. It's right in the middle. You let me know. Let's do something. Fast drop. All right. <laughs> All right. I'll keep. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, thank you, uh, Logan, for your candidness on that question. I know it can be difficult sometimes to be truthful and critical about you know some of the things that we deal with in our scene. You know and. You know, we know people are in this to make money. You know, they want to make money. Money's driving everything. And for artists and people like me, you know, it, it becomes a little frustrating. Um, but, you know, hopefully it'll get better. Hopefully it'll get better. We never really wanted to focus on our little hometown. You know what I mean? Yeah, we yeah, always, yeah. We always wanted to get out and play different Well, I places. think Vesperian Star is bigger than Austin. It's Not, it is bigger than I don't than want to everything. say that. You know what I mean? I there's, say that. I'll no, say that for you. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, we, we never really focused. We never really clicked with any local scene. The, yeah, yeah. The, the eight or nine of them that's gone through and in and out of Austin already you sure. know, over the years. But, like, we always were like, man, let's go play sure. somewhere else. Sure. You know, and we happen to be in the Austin area. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Austin band. Sure, and and the same thing has happened at Rob's Metalworks. We are we you know when we went from public access to online, we became a worldwide thing, not just San, a San Antonio thing. And you know, I'll share some numbers with you after we get off camera. But we've uh, we, we've never like I said, uh, we uh, we've never really clicked with any scene in Austin. We've sure. always just kind of did our own thing, done your own thing. Yeah. And thank you for saying that. I think it takes balls to say that on camera. <laughs> Gentlemen, as we end out, I want to give each of you, because I know each of you are artists who have committed yourselves to heavy music for the majority of your lives. And, you know, each of us uh, continue to pursue our passions just because we love it, but we need the support and love of people around us to do it. So let's start with Chris 
And Chris, you know, I just want I just want each of you I'm gonna give each of you an opportunity to share any thank yous, any love, any gratitude that you have for people in your lives, uh, people in the industry, your bandmates, anybody who that you that you feel at this point in your career has contributed to uh, what you continue to do? Well, first and foremost, it's going to be my wife, Cynthia. So, and then... Cynthia's cool. Yeah, yeah, Cynthia's cool. She's all right. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and my family. I mean, uh, being a musician, you know, they got to put up with a lot of shit. <laughs> you being late hours, like going imagine. out on the road. So, it's, so that that's all my thanks and all my being able to move forward and continue doing this is her and my family. So. Okay. Me? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, wife and kids. Oh thank you know. You have little kids? Well how old are your kids? Thirteen and seven. Oh my God. Seven? Yeah. 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 Wife and kids, obviously. And uh Chris too. Chris, you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Chris and grandpa now. Uh but yeah, Chris too, and and Logan, Chris, and your, Gabe, and your lifelong musical partner. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> right? Where would you be without Chris? Uh, I have no idea. But uh, yeah, it's been a journey. It's been a journey for sure. But uh, yeah, um, family first, and everything else secondary. Here you go. <laughs> here, here, go. Take it. Take it. Take it. <laughs> I guess I want to thank. Uh, uh, who do I thank? Man, there's so many people. All right. Huh? Um, <laughs> I guess all my all my loved ones. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, we're right here. Oh, okay, guys. <laughs> Take off those shirts. No, uh, my uh, you know my significant other April, uh, and of course uh, my family and uh, brothers and a lot of my friends over the years. I have a lot of friends. Uh, my you know some of my previous bandmates have always been supportive of this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Diamond Gabe himself. Um, and of course, all the fans and all the people there that have go. really, really, really uh, there you go. supported this and kind of helped keep us going over the years. Uh, I know, I know, Will may not say it, but he reads these comments, and uh, and he it, it just really makes his day when he sees someone that says, "Man, Vesperian's one of my favorite black metal symphonic black metal bands," and that I can tell that really affects Will in a very positive way, and it, it does keep. Um, it keeps the band in really good spirits. Um, so yeah, I mean, without the people, the fans, the people that continue to listen, um, obsessively over, uh, you know, you know, the little fine details in the music, even the people that criticize us, um, we do pay attention to some of those things and we take some of those critiques and we're like, well, maybe, maybe they're right about something. Uh, most of the time they're wrong, but <laughs> true. true. Uh, but yeah, no, there's a lot of people that have supported us. And uh, yeah, so to that, we thank you. And, uh, and again, again, Will and Chris, uh, thank, thank you guys. Thank you. And to you uh, again, thank you so much. And uh, you, Mr. Cameraman and you, Mr. Cameraman and you, ma'am and you, ma'am. Thank you everyone. So, yeah. Well said, my friend. Well said. It's been such a great pleasure. And guys, all week I was looking forward to this interview because I'm a big, big fan of this record. So thank you for driving down here from your respective areas and spending time with the Rob's crew and talking about your record. Um, I hope I hope that um, this record just dropped yesterday, everybody again. Awaken the Gray Light just dropped yesterday, so be sure to look for it. I hope this record does wondrous things. I think it's off to a a great start. And, you know, you guys have not only... I mean, I I love it because uh, you guys have stayed uh, respectful to your past and have continued to deliver quality music and a quality product. Uh, in the market so there's no reason fans would not love it so again I, I, I am thankful to you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this on the Rob's uh, show and uh, for you guys to be here and you know talk about all kinds of other things that we were talking about yeah. off camera and uh, you know I hope I hope uh, that we have a little bit more opportunity after we finish recording, okay? Remember everyone out there, 
how can you forget the brand new record from Asperian Sorrow is called Awaken the Grey Light. Yeah, fucking UFOs gonna be fucking get you. <laughs> I wish they would come get me. I really do. Anyway, be sure to look for it. Go download it. Go listen to it on all your music media outlets. You will love it just like I do. You saw the band right here on Rob's. Yeah.